Jesus returned to his hometown. His disciples came along. On the Sabbath, he gave a lecture in the meeting place. He stole the show, impressing everyone. We had no idea he was this good, they said. How did he get so wise all of a sudden get such ability? But in the next breath, they were cutting him down. He's just a carpenter, Mary's boy. We've known him since he was a kid. We know his brothers, James, Justice, Jude, and Simon and his sisters. Who does he think he is? They tripped over what little they knew about him and fell, sprawling. And they never got any further. Jesus told them, A prophet has little honor in his hometown, among his relatives, on the streets he played in as a child. Jesus wasn't able to do much of anything there. He laid hands on a few sick people and healed them, that's all. He couldn't get over their stubbornness. He left and made a circuit of the other villages teaching. Jesus called the twelve to him and sent them out in pairs. He gave them authority and power to deal with the evil opposition. He sent them off with these instructions. Don't think you'll need a lot of extra equipment for this. You are the equipment. No special appeals for funds. Keep it simple and no luxury ends. Get a modest place and be content there until you leave. If you're not welcome, not listened to, quietly withdraw. Don't make a scene. Shrug your shoulders and be on your way. Then they were on the road. They preached with joyful urgency that life can be radically different. Right and left, they sent the demons packing. They brought wellness to the sick, anointing their bodies, healing their spirits. King Herod heard of all this, for by this time the name of Jesus was on everyone's lips. He said, this has to be John the baptizer come back from the dead. That's why he's able to work miracles. Others said, no, it's Elijah. Others said, he's a prophet, just like one of the old time prophets. But Herod wouldn't budge. It's John, I'm sure enough. I cut off his head and now he's back alive. Herod was the one who had ordered the arrest of John, put him in chains, and sent him to prison at the nagging of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. For John had provoked Herod by naming his relationship with Herodias adulteress. Herodias, smothering with hate, wanted to kill him but didn't dare because Herod was in awe of John. Convinced that he was a holy man, he gave him special treatment. Whenever he listened to him, he was miserable with guilt, and yet he couldn't stay away. Something in John kept pulling him back. But a portentous day arrived when Herod threw a birthday party inviting all the brass and blue bloods in Galilee. Herodias' daughter entered the banquet hall and danced for the guest. She charmed Herod and the guest. The king said to the girl, Ask me anything, I'll give you anything you want. Carried away, he kept on. I swear, I'll split my kingdom with you if you say so. She went back to her mother and said, What should I ask for? Ask for the head of John the baptizer. Excited, she ran back to the king and said, I want the head of John the baptizer served up on a platter, and I want it now. That sobered the king up fast, but unwilling to lose face with his guest, he caved in and let her have her wish. The king set the executioner off to the prison with orders to bring back John's head. He went, cut off John's head, brought it back on a platter, and presented it to the girl who gave it to her mother. When John's disciples heard about this, they came and got the body and gave it a decent burial. The apostles then rendezvoused with Jesus and reported on all that they had done and taught. Jesus said, Come off by yourselves. Let's take a break and get a little rest. 
for there was constant coming and going. They didn't even have time to eat. So they got in the boat and went off to a remote place by themselves. Someone saw them going. The word got around. From the surrounding towns, people went out on foot, running, and got there ahead of them. When Jesus arrived, he saw this huge crowd. At the sight of them, his heart broke. Like a sheep with no shepherds they were, he went right to work teaching them. When his disciples thought this had gone on long enough, it was now quite late in the day, they interrupted. We are a long way out in the country, and it's very late. Pronounce a benediction and send these folks off so they can get some supper. Jesus said, you do it. Fix supper for them. They replied, are you serious? You want us to go spend a fortune on food for their supper? But he was quite serious. How many loaves of bread do you have? Take an inventory. That didn't take long. Five, they said, plus two fish. Jesus got them all to sit down in groups of 50 or 100. They looked like a patchwork quilt of wildflowers spread out in the green grass. He took the five loaves and the two fish, lifted his face to heaven in prayer, blessed, broke, and gave the bread to the disciples. And the disciples in turn gave it to the people. He did the same with the fish. They all ate their fill. The disciples gathered 12 baskets of leftovers. More than 5,000 were at the supper. As soon as the meal was finished, Jesus insisted that the disciples get in the boat and go on ahead across to Bethsaida while he dismissed the congregation. After sending them off, he climbed a mountain to pray. Late at night, the boat was far out at sea. Jesus was still by himself on land. He could see his men struggling with the oars, the wind having come up against them. At about four o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the sea. He intended to go right by them. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and screamed, scared to death. Jesus was quick to comfort them. Courage, it's me. Don't be afraid. As soon as he climbed into the boat, the wind died down. They were stunned, shaking their heads, wondering what was going on. They didn't understand what he'd done at the supper. None of this had yet penetrated their hearts. They beached the boat at Gennesaret and tied up at the landing. As soon as they got out of the boat, word got around fast. People ran this way and that, bringing their sick on stretchers to where they heard he was. Wherever he went, village or town or country crossroads, they brought their sick to the marketplace and begged him to let them touch the edge of his coat. That's all. And whoever touched him became well.